So today I want to talk about the reasons why I stopped making video games as an independent game developer. There are a bunch of reasons, but three is what I will keep it to. And in no particular order, they are burnout, passion, and money. And I'm going to go over quickly, or maybe not so quickly, what each of those points meant to me. For burnout, as an independent game developer, what we were doing was we had a, uh, a deal with a publisher, and with that deal came milestones, and with those milestones came payment. So what that meant was that we were continuously working in order to meet those milestones, meet the build, uh, build deadlines in order to get something in the hands of the publisher for them to test. So as a, a team of one and a half person, myself being one and the other half being a, a part-timer, part-time developer, was that there was no slack or leeway in terms of letting the work slide. If there was if there was something that had to be done, we obviously had to do it. We didn't have anyone to push it off to another developer or anything. So in order to fix bugs, to create new features, to explore different gameplay avenues, that was all on us. And generally what that meant was working at least 10 hours a day, at least going anywhere to 16 hour a day, hours a day in order to get something in for the next day for the QA team to test. So burnout is, is pretty bad in the game industry as a whole, just because doing creative projects are, it's really hard to predict when things get done. You're always building something brand new, um, not predictable. So generally at the end of the cycle, people just start trying to get things done in order to meet a hard deadline. And in other software industries, it's possible where you can shrink the scope of the project or extend the deadline, but it is less of a thing in the game development industry. You can't really cut features, although some people do, and it leads to really buggy projects, and we see that a lot in the game industry, but uh, trying not to ramble on too far. The... The burnout portion is that, yes, there are deadlines, yes, there are features that have to be met, and in order to do so, we have to put in extra hours in order to, to accomplish that goal. And there's only so far that a human, a person, can actually work 16 hours a day, and if you push beyond that, you're going to lead to burnout. And that's something that happened to me was definitely, even though it was a passion project, it, it led to burnout. The second, speaking of passion, is passion. What started off as a passion project, something that we made in order to, to fulfill our creative, um, our creative desires, ended up, uh, ended up losing that passion once we worked on it for a while. And that, that's true with everything. If you, you do something too, too much or you do something that you get burnt out on, you, you tend to lose passion. And for us, for me personally, was that working on the, the game type that we were doing, which was a mobile, casual, match three type of game, was interesting at the beginning, but it's not generally a game type that I like to play and just working on the same thing over and over and over just testing it made me really lose the passion for for those type of games or just making games in general um and i think it it's one of the problems when you're working with one of your personal projects that you may be enthusiastic about at the beginning it's just once it gets to the qa process once you're just finding bugs and just repeat just testing, release, testing, release all over again. It just, you lose your passion for it. I lose my passion for it. I shouldn't say you. Some people might like doing that, but personally, my passion got drained once I was just working on a game that 
after a couple of months, I just didn't care for it anymore in terms of play as a player. And that leads to the third, which is money. A lot of people say they, you should really do things for money. You should do things, whatever. Uh, in the end, money was a, a pretty big factor in, in continuing as an independent game developer. When you're working at a normal job, you tend to get predictable income. You know when your next paycheck is, is coming, arguably. But when you're an independent game developer tied to milestones, you are working in order to meet those milestones to get paid. But as soon as a project is over, if you have no, if you have no other source of income, for example, royalties, then you pretty much have to struggle to pitch the next game idea. And hopefully you got, you have some money saved up from the last project in order to continue developing. That's a huge problem in, in uh, being an independent uh, game developer with just, in our case, one title out. We, we had one game out, we had the money from it, but there was nothing on the horizon. It meant that we had to go seek the publisher and pitch another game that could be commercially viable. And commercial viability at the time meant making more of the same type of games that was out there, the games that we didn't play. So it, it just wasn't something that I wanted to do was just repeat trying to trying to make Candy Crush Part 2 or whatnot. That, that's just not something I'm passionate about or even know too much about in terms of getting people addicted to a game. So... Money was a, it was a huge factor and is a huge factor in continuing making independent games. So those were the three reasons why I stopped making independent games. And I took a, a bit of time off, but I believe that uh, with a clear lens of, of having worked in another industry, it, 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 it's something that I would love to continue doing as... A passion project and not necessarily do for a living so hopefully in the future I'll make some more video games just to put out there just to scratch my creative itch and yeah hope you took some away something away from that and learned something maybe not at least hopefully my audio work this time so see you next time <laughs>